How many miles away is the Ukraine? Remind me, no? Listen, it's too many. <laughs> way, way too many. <laughs> to apply to the school, that wasn't the challenge. That process was pretty simple. Applied, got accepted. But the whole process now of getting the documentation done so that she could legally go there to study, that was a nightmare. How so? Literally, it was a very complicated process. There were a lot of changes based on diplomatic relations and new agreements between the governments. And when we had done one set of documentation, then uh, we were told by the Foreign Affairs Ministry that you know, we had to do something new, which was based on some new um, uh, agreement. And so we had to do this whole process because I, I think it was called apostolization, which was something new at the time. So we faced numerous delays and we were spending and we were spending and the waiting was just so um, exhausting. You know, uh, it took months. It took months for the processing to happen. And there were times when I thought it wouldn't even happen. It took many months and we had to be very deliberate. We had to be very determined. But at the end of the day, we were focused on her dream of becoming a doctor. And so we knew we were doing it for a bigger re a reason that was bigger than our you know, frustration and whatever. <laughs> so we pushed through. Eventually, she got the visa and she left here in November of last year to oh, start her process. How much of a factor was the language difference between here and, and, and UK? It didn't bother us because my daughter is a very outgoing person. We knew there would be language barriers, clearly, because she's going into a new um, culture and, and, and all of that. But uh, we were prepared to take that a day at a time. So um, we did what we needed to do. In terms of doing the, the applications and the paperwork, we had to be paying for translations. So we, we were paying for translations. And then as a matter of fact, there is this thing about whether the documents were translated here in Jamaica or were translated in Ukraine. And if they were translated here, they have to go through a certain process um, to be verified and, and, and authenticated. Um, lucky for us, we had paid for the translation in Ukraine and even so we faced some delays and we had to explain that, listen, it's the Ukraine and themselves translated. So I don't know, you're no better than this kind of thing. And so it was a very, very rigorous process for us. It was so exhausting. It was so exhausting. And this is why it was so painful when three months later, she was being told, you need to get on a plane and come home. Initially, I delayed the opportunity to study in Ukraine by two years because I said, no, you're not going so far from me. There's no way I'm doing that, sending you halfway across the world. I can't just jump on a plane if anything goes wrong. So when, when two years later, I am not at the place where I'm taking her to the airport to say goodbye, you're going to... First of all, I tried to get the Ukrainian visa and I had difficulties getting it, which is the reason... Yes, which is why, which is the reason she had to go alone. Because by the time her visa came, I still hadn't completed the processing to get a visa so that I could accompany her as her mom. That was difficult for me, but honestly, I think I was just really driven by what I saw my daughter going through. She was, she was in a place where she was being driven by her ambition. She's a very goal-oriented individual, very ambitious, very focused, hard-working child, and she performs exceptionally academically. So when I saw that with her, her perf high performance, I still, couldn't, I still couldn't get her into school. She couldn't be placed in her own country where she lives. You, know, you, 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 you can't get a space unless you can pay the four point odd million. She didn't get accepted to the faculty even with her high performance, I didn't think I needed to stand in the way of her dream. She is, she is destined to be a doctor. She believes that and I believe that I support her. And so my only, my only concern was making that happen one way or another. So I was worried, I was nervous, I was being tough because her dream for me was bigger than my fears. And I would prefer to have them live that way. So the traveling process was in excess of 24 hours. When she left us at the Sanctus International Airport in Montego Bay, her next stop from there, I believe she went to Panama. So when she got to Panama, she got an opportunity to make contact with me. So you know, none of this time, me not sleeping, me not eating, me not doing anything else because all I, all I need to know is that she's safe. She was waiting for several hours because the next flight would have been hours apart to take her now into Turkey. I remember at one point, she was so exhausted in the airport. She says, Mommy, this is crazy. There was nowhere for her to sit. Like, you know, you're sitting away in here in our airport. She was walking around. She had to walk long distances in the airport. Long distances. 
distance in the airport to get from gate to gate and that kind of thing. And when she, she was so burnt out and exhausted, she said, Mommy, I, I want to just sit right here. I said, all right, just make yourself comfortable. You know, she, she sat on the ground in the airport, made herself comfortable. And then I was on the phone with her. I had to stay on the phone with her because due to the long um, uh, gaps in between flight, she was no tired and burnt out. And she said, Mommy, I feel like I might fall asleep and miss my flight. So I was on the phone with her the entire time, having her by, having her by Wi-Fi access in the Turkish airport so that she could stay on the phone with me on WhatsApp. And I stayed on just to keep her awake. By the time she landed now in Ukraine and she said, Mommy, I am here. Then you know that's when all of the fears subside and you take a deep breath and, and you, you move the fear to another level because now you're saying, all right, all right. I need to hear that everything is authentic with this university that we've been negotiating with, sending money to be paid over for tuition and all of that thing. Who are the people meeting my daughter? You know? Um, I remember talking to the recruiter because I thought she was picking up my daughter and the next thing I know I get in a text message that mommy two persons are here to pick me up I said where is the recruiter da, da, da. and I remember getting on the phone to say to the recruiter what is happening you did not inform me that you would not be the individual because I'm very involved this is my child I have two girls you know but the process went through clean and smooth uh, you know apart from those that are unexpected it is but um, it, it's just it's just very emotionally daunting for the most part because in the back of my mind I'm sending my daughter half the world away from me. Up to this point, how has she performed? How how your how your schooling go? Culture difference and all of that. How did she assimilate? How did she? The she... culture difference was a challenge when she got there. Even though they're taught in English, there are accents. <laughs> so they're taught in English, but I mean, since she's been back to Jamaica, I've been overhearing her in, in some of the classes and I'm asking myself, would I be able to learn? Even though they're talking in English, but that, those accents, I don't know if I, I could learn. But she managed to settle in. It was a challenge initially because she started the year late. She left there in November. Their, their school year started in September. And that was going to the slow processing, the whole documentation. It was a very slow process, as I told you. And so when she got there, she started late. We were assured they wouldn't be disadvantaged because they, they have the students register in batches. So she would basically be starting with her batch. So at no point she would be at a disadvantage. Unfortunately, that wasn't exactly true. Because the next thing I knew was that she was trying to do a whole semester's work in like, in like a few weeks. And so she wasn't sleeping. She was she was just going, going, going. She was saying, Mommy, I don't have time to cook. I said, just order food. Just 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 get something to eat. Because I understood she was now trying to play catch up. So it was a very intense period for her. So it, it may sound like a short period of time, but then she would have had so much vested over the three-month period because of what they had to go through to to get adaptive to the climate to get she was freezing <laughs> she couldn't handle the cold it was just so much but in spite of the discomfort she knew she had to do that and she was prepared to go the full six six years to get her medicine degree in my daughter's head it was difficult but she was not about to walk away from an opportunity to get a medicine degree so I was on the phone with her every day. I knew the hardship. I knew when she was struggling. I knew when the cold was beating her up. I knew when she was trying to catch up with the grades. I knew I knew when she passed. I knew when she failed because they were failing some because they were getting like a uh, uh, they were getting notice of an exam tomorrow, today. And in some cases they didn't even have the material yet. So they were acquiring the material to prepare for an exam tomorrow or the day after. It was it was ridiculous. Hands down. It was just <laughs> ridiculous at, at, at you know at some point. But like I said, regardless of that, my daughter had no intentions to walk away. She went there for a medicine degree and she was prepared to come back home with one. So so I was just supporting her. I was just supporting her to get through the tough times and just comforting her to say, as soon as it levels off, you'll be okay. So that, you know, had she leveled off or, or had she... So pretty much she had... Pushed it to the curve as yet? She had now started the second semester, which is where okay. she was anticipating getting to a better comfort level mm -hmm. with the curriculum and having, you know, gone through, mind you, doing the first semester in a few weeks. She was now getting ready to settle into semester two because then now they would have caught up with the rest of the batch and would have been on the same timeline 
when did you start paying attention to things in the global arena in respect of Ukraine, Russia, um, US? When did it hit home that, hey, something is happening here beyond my country? So I think maybe we've been following it for about a, a month or a little under a month. And uh, obviously, since she migrated to Ukraine, it suddenly became one of my favorite countries. <laughs> Because now I need to know everything that's yeah. going on there because my daughter is there, you know. So I, I was always following because bear in mind when she was uh, she, when she was going overseas, we already knew that, you know, there are hus um, tense relations between Russia and Ukraine. So for me as a mother, I would always have to be on top of that and know what is happening. Yes. And so I was always kind of following just, you know, keeping abreast of stuff. When it started coming in the news now about tensions building, I started saying, but wait, you know, this has been going on for a while. Why does it sound a little different from what I was hearing for the last eight years? Because um, I remember when she was going, persons were like, you sure you want to send her to Ukraine? And I would say, but it's been going on for a while. It's been eight years. You know, it, it's just what it is. But I'm sure she can study and get out before anything happens, you know, it's, it, you know. Um, but boy, nobody would have told me that three months after her arrival, you know. Um, so we were we were monitoring the news. We started here in Ukraine in the news a little bit too often. And so it piqued my interest. I started reading. I started trying to get the articles. My relatives overseas, as soon as they heard something, they would send it. Her cousins who study overseas, they were sending the articles fast and furious. And they were calling, Auntie, get her out, get her out, Auntie, get her out. So um, even at a point when we were saying, I wonder if we, we, we are about to act too fast. I wonder, we don't want to panic. I was making my own calls here, checking in with the Foreign Affairs Ministry, checking in here and there. I was making my own calls, wanting to verify if what I hear in the media, if it's so, do I need to be bringing her home? You know, so I was monitoring the situation very, very closely. But when we started getting dates, we started getting dates, and then we hear that by next week, the, the, the an, um, estimated invasion time is by next week and I said no this is this is getting ridiculous now we don't need to watch this any longer we need to act so it became a question of when do I pull you now or do I have you wait um, to the end of the week in the hope that maybe you would get your residency document because those are pretty much ready so the question wasn't wasn't a, a question of should she come home it was a matter of when am I taking her this week or am I taking her next week because it wasn't getting any better, what you were hearing in the news, it wasn't getting any better. Speaking of the importance of that residency status, what is, why is it so important? It's important because it's what gives them the legal, um, the legal um, right to stay in the country and study for six years. So the visa that they go on is really for about a period of three months. And so at the end of that three month period, this residency document would, would have needed to kick in so that they're not there without um, proper documentation. So the process is supposed to flow so smoothly so that you transition from one to the next. But I mean, nothing, you know, you know how life is. Anything that can happen will happen. And so even at the time she was there, her student visa had just expired like about a week before. And she was now saying, mommy, I don't understand why I don't get the documentation yet. And, you know, so we were calling the agent. We were asking her to check with the school. Why is the residency document not yet ready? The visa has no expired. I don't want her there without proper documentation. But the process there is slow. I can tell you for as far as the, 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 the companies and businesses and the schools there were concerned, nothing was happening. We were the ones freaking out. Nothing was happening. And so you weren't about to rush their processes, you know. Does so. she yet have that? Has she, has, she, has she got it yet? Unfortunately, I don't know if it is even ready because with what is happening in Ukraine now, there's no way to find out. The school has since closed, um, you know, suspended classes. Um, the recruiter who I would have been liaising with is also now traveling for safety to head to, 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 to Poland because she's also a Jamaica. So there's no way to know if there's any further development with anything like that um, because everybody right now is in chaos, running for their lives. My daughter is now with me in Jamaica. Oh. She is here and she is safe. She, she, she got home last week, Sunday night. How did she get here from there? And I didn't right. That. So what had happened is I was making provisions for my daughter to come home without the government's help. 
I, I wasn't waiting for assistance. I was in on the meetings with the Jamaican embassy. Um, wasn't liking what I was hearing. Didn't feel very much like, you know, I was getting the kind of assurance I needed to get. So I was working with my family to make preparations to, to bring her home. And so, um, and so when I, when I, when I recognized and I heard the last uh, frightening thing that we heard was that, okay, we anticipate that by Wednesday, Russia would strike. When she was going, I had her buy a two-way ticket because for me, I was always able to go home. Right? Even though we were, we were instructed not to do that because she don't need it, that she would be there for so long. So, all right, fine. My agent, thank God for her, she insisted. Mrs. Thomas put her on a two-way ticket. So that ticket was supposed to take her home for the summer. So when we started hearing everything that was happening, um, I was saying, no, we can't move the ticket. I can't go put this down for July with what I'm hearing. So we started waiting and monitoring, waiting and monitoring. My agent was monitoring it because I was coming to a place where I was either going to lose the return opportunity on that ticket, or I was going to have to pay an arm and a leg to move it by the time I made up my mind. But I was not prepared to move it to July and have a situation where she needed to come home. No one can move. So long and short of it is, is that I ended up paying a bag of money at the last minute when we decided so okay she needs to come no had to had it changed you know my family jumped in because we had to get her into hotels in the different countries we had put her on the first flight for the monday when we heard on the sunday evening that this thing building up and they anticipate strikes by the wednesday i said no 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 get out of here all right let me tell us the date which sunday she left and what route did she take so it was train bus. it was it was last week sunday she arrived she flew out the Monday before. She was traveling for a whole week before she got home. So she took the flight from Ukraine to Turkey. She was to stay in Turkey for three nights, then board a flight to Panama, stay in Panama for one night, and then fly to Jamaica the following day. It could have taken her home for the Friday of the same week. However, when she was to leave Turkey, she was being told that she couldn't, she couldn't board the flight because um, they were saying that it's a transit ticket she was in when, on when in fact it was not a transit ticket because she was supposed to stay in Panama for a whole night, check into the hotel and everything. So her bags were to go to Panama and then she was to check into the hotel, next day go on another flight, come to Jamaica. They checked her bags in error to go straight to Jamaica, to come straight to Jamaica. And then having done that now, they blocked her from boarding the flight, telling her that she couldn't board because she can't stay in Panama for more than 12 hours. My agent, may, may God bless her soul, my agent, and if um, my agent, if it were not for her, my daughter probably still wouldn't be here. Tunde was on the phone with me from 11 o'clock that night until 2.30 a.m. We were on a WhatsApp call with my daughter in the Turkish airport with her flight being canceled. And, 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 and she stayed on the phone. She told my daughter what to do. Had them cancel because they booked her as if she had already flown, so we couldn't even get to change the flight. And, and, and my agent had to have my daughter instruct her what to do so she could be talking to them. And bear in mind, we had, we're navigating language barriers in the middle of all of this. So, you know, it's high nervousness and stress and everything. And she was able to get them to cancel what they had in the system so that she could rebook the flight. My daughter had to go back to the hotel. My agent stayed on the phone with me till 2.30 a.m. when my daughter said, yes, I'm in the hotel. They have a room for me. That's when Tunde hung up from, from Total Travel. I'm so thankful to her. I'm so thankful. And the very next day, my daughter was facing the same trouble again. The very next day, after they told us, in, in Turkey, oh, after they see. told us that she can't book this way, mm. but, and the agent had it changed and booked two totally separate things so that now my daughter had to show her that is one flight here and one flight there because if we put them on one, they're going to run it like a transit. We did what they said to do and the very next day, they were giving her the same problems again, telling her she can't fly. My family is a, is a praying family. I had to get them on the phone. I said, you need to get, get into prayer now. My daughter needs to get home. And we were on the phone with Esther. We just started interceding while she was there trying to navigate it. At one point, the phone went, went blank. Couldn't hear anything. I was so stressed out because I said, God, I can't hear from her. They must have told her to turn off the phone because she was with immigration. They pulled her out of the line and had her one side and wouldn't let her go through. And we just went into prayer. Didn't know what to do. We just went into prayer because we had already done what we could. The next text I got from her, she says, Mommy, I'm on the plane. They had to escort me through because they almost had me miss the flight the second time around. Right? So that's just God. 
And for me, I would have been going crazy if she was still stuck that the end with when this thing started getting out of hand like that. So she had to book an, an additional night in Panama because she had missed the right flight to come. So she had to do an additional night in Panama. So even though she left Ukraine Monday morning, she never got here until Sunday, Sunday night when I picked her up. You know, but I'm thankful. You know, she's bad. Give you. Tell me about her state of mind. Does she still. Is, has she settled down? Is she jittery? Is she nervous? Does she wake up at night? Has, has she settled in? Uh, has she settled down? Yet? She said to me, she said to me this morning, she says, Mommy, they're on the train to Lviv. Once they get to Lviv, um, they're going to try to get to Poland because she's in touch with the other Jamaican. She's still in touch with them very closely monitoring the situation. She says, once they get across to Poland, I can get my head space back. She says, I can begin to think about the fact that I am no longer in med school. <laughs> so for her, she's consumed because her friends are left back behind in the turmoil that is going on. She has been on the phone with them monitoring every move from their moves to bomb shelters, from bomb shelters to get, trying to get on the train and not being able to get on the train. She's been in the belly of it, even though she's not there. So her mind is very consumed. She's highly stressed highly highly stressed because you can imagine she feels very close to the situation given that she literally just had an arrest here where is your space i'm i'm having a high degree of anxiety and that the truth is i feel like one of the parents even though my daughter is here i i'm, I'm carrying such a burden for the parents whose children are on the move and so the fact that my daughter is here and she's monitoring their every move there in ukraine I feel very much a part of it. It's just been so heavily stressful. It's just been a lot of, you know, I'm, we're praying and I'm having my church intercede on behalf of the children that are left there, but it's a high degree of stress. Because for me, I, I can't rest until I hear the rest of them are safe. My daughter will always be one of them. My daughter will always be one of them who just happened to leave early enough on my instruction because I decided I wasn't going to take a chance. I think all our students should have the first option to study at home. That's the burden I carry walking through this experience. You know, I didn't want my daughter in Ukraine. I had to send her there because she couldn't get a place here in the country where she lives. I'd love to see a Jamaica where our students, our brilliant minds are prioritized and have an opportunity to study at home as the first option.